ang nakaraan sa Thinking Out Loud with Rafael Lunan. Yung mga merchant ships at saka warships ng foreign countries, pwede sila dumaan pero innocent pa sa kailangan a straight line, continuous and expeditious. Hindi sila pwede paikot-ikot dyan. Yung South China Sea, that's the entire, yung buong South China Sea, malaki yan. The entire body of water. Yung West Philippine Sea refers to our territorial sea, our EEZ, and extended continental shelf. Okay. So yung West Philippine Sea ay portion lang ng bigger sea which is the South China Sea. Isang bahagi. Tinawag natin West Philippine Sea because tayong may sovereign rights to exploit the resources. This is for a economic purpose and for a military purpose. And that's why they have military outposts in the Spratlys, air and naval bases. And would you say that this is related to their goal of becoming the next superpower? That's it. They, for them to be a superpower, they have to break out of the first island chain because they have to get out. They go into the second island chain and get out. But they are surrounded by, well, supposed to be allies of the U.S. You have Japan, you have uh, uh, Taiwan, you have the Philippines. Hindi sila makalabas eh. At para sa pagpapatuloy ng Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan, pakinggan at panoorin ang muling tapatan ni na Rafi Alunan at ni Supreme Court Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio sa DZRH Radio. Manood sa DZRH News Television sa ating live feed sa DZRH News Television Facebook page at YouTube live channel. Gayun din sa ating website sa DZRHnews.com. Narito na ang Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan. We're going to talk about how we're going to protect ourselves at a later time yeah, uh, in okay. the interview. But now I want to move over to the other side of our EEZ, yeah. uh, the right. East Philippine Sea, East Philippine sea. Okay. Uh, which we haven't named yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, if we look at uh, our EEZ, parang isang malaking bakod yan eh. Nasa loob tayo ng bakod. Mm. So dito sa left is uh, the West Philippine Sea. Mm. Dito sa right, yung East Philippine Sea. Mm. Dito sa baba, yung Celebe Sea. Celebe Siguro, sea. we'll rename it the South Philippine Sea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, dito sa east, eastern side, ang pinakamalaking asset natin dyan ngayon uh, is Benham. Okay. Could you please explain to the audience how we got Benham Rice mm-hmm. uh, as our uh, exclusive territory, economic territory, when and uh, whether that is uh, a disputed territory comp- uh, as l- just like KIG. The, in the East Philippine Sea, we have again a territorial sea of 12 nautical miles, 188 nautical miles of EEZ. And because there's no other country opposite, we claim now an extended continental shelf. Now under UNCLOS, you file your claim with the UN Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf. If no country opposes, then that commission will award it to you. We'll say, confirm, you have an extended continental shelf. And that's what happened. When we filed it with the UN Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf, nobody opposed because wala namang kalaban eh, there's yeah. no country. So we, it was awarded to us because nobody opposed. If there is an opposition, the commission cannot do anything. It will have to be litigated in, uh, in ITLOS or in ICJ. Now, so what, uh, as I said, Benham Rice is beyond our 200 nautical mile already. But we did not really get a full 150. We only got up to 100 because complicated the rules there. Kung th- there is a sudden drop there, you are only entitled to up to 100 and there is a sudden drop at the edge of our e is a sudden drop okay so we're talking 300 uh, 300 miles uh, 200 plus 300 oh, 100 plus, plus 300 so, so, total now okay total now uh, that's not land right that's water that's water how how do we put up a vir- virtual mohons to say hey hanggang dito yung aming teritoryo well uh, it will appear in all nautical charts uh, in all nautical charts approved by the International Hydrographic uh, Organization, by the inter- Intergovernmental uh, Oceanographic uh, 
commission, it will all appear. So there will be uh, longitude, latitude markings. So everybody will know kung saan yun. Is that already established or we still have to establish it? Uh, well, uh, when you apply with the UN Commission on the limits of the continental shelf, you, you, submit. you, you submit the coordinates yeah. and those coordinates are given to the International Hydrographic Organization. So they should be able to uh, put it in the... Uh, no. And every country in the world is notified? Yeah, every country is notified. All right. Why is it that people are uh, nangangamba? Sa mga sa ginagawa ng China sa Benham Rice? Well, uh, under international law, under UNCLOS, no country can claim Benham Rice anymore because it's been awarded to us. Atin na yan. Ang problem is, when you look at China and the dispute in the South China Sea, you will be worried. Mga nga baka. Kasi sabi ng China, you know, China did not participate in the Hague proceedings. But China said, we are not participating, pero ito yung position paper namin. Mm. Binasa, basahin mo yung position paper, sabi nila, China owns the South China Sea because since 2,000 years ago, China is the first country to discover, name, and explore the South China Sea. The first to discover, name, and explore. It sounds a bell. Baka ginagawa nila sa Benham Rice. They are claiming now they are the first to discover, name, and explore. Baka later on, they will also claim it. Now, of course, legally, they cannot claim it. But it's like the South China Sea. Legally, sabi ng tribunal, hindi sa inyo yan. But they still insist. And they're using now military might, naval might. So that's why some people are worried. Mm -hmm. Because China doesn't follow uh, the, the rules. The rules. The road, yeah. So we have to be on guard. Legally, there's no problem. But in reality, China might use its growing naval might that's why we have always to be on guard and that's the only way to protect our territory our maritime zones we have to be always on guard and if there's one place where they would love to have their nuclear subs it should be on the other side because it's deeper water it's they might want to put up a base there or an, a, a, a put up an artificial island so we have to be on guard mm -hmm. because uh, if you are, it's just like land. If you leave it alone, you have a land, you know, you will get squatters. It's, it's also the same. You own the sea, but if you don't use it, you don't guard it, others will get the resources. So if they've discovered it and they named it, later on they're going to claim it. This, well, the same way Luzon was known as Luzon. <laughs> they might just claim Luzon as to be part of their territory. My worry is <laughs> that has been their pattern in the South China Sea. Yeah. They claim that 2,000 years ago, they, were, they already discovered the South China Sea. They named it. And the, but there's no proof, right? It's <laughs> well, all anecdotal. It's all anecdotal. And the tribunal already ruled. There is no evidence at all that China controlled the South China Sea since 2,000 years ago. Because we presented all the ancient maps of China. Pag totoo sinasabi ng China, Pero ito yung mapa nila. They never included the South China Sea. They never included the Paracels, Spratlys, or Scarborough Shoal. Not one dynasty map of China from 1100 to 1900. Quick question before we move over to the West Philippine Sea again. How come we haven't named the Eastern Seaboard the East Philippine Sea? Is it necessary? Well, the Eastern Seaboard is already called Philippine Sea. Okay. It's already named Philippine Sea, uh, but Within the Philippine Sea, malaki yun eh. Uh -oh. Kaya sabi ko, if uh, China will claim the South China Sea because it's called South China Sea, let's claim the Philippines. <laughs> it's a bigger sea. <laughs> okay. So, now let's move back to the West Philippine Sea and let's talk about Scarborough. Okay. Um, there are arguments or debates whether Scarborough is within Philippine territory or not. Mm -hmm. May nagsasabi, that was left out by the Treaty of Paris. May nagsasabi naman na, hindi, it was corrected by the Treaty of Washington. Uh, when we presented our case uh, before the arbitral tribunal, was that point raised? Yes, we, we mentioned the Treaty of Washington of 1900. 
because if you look at the Treaty of Paris that was signed in 1898, there are, there are lines. And the uh, Scarborough Shoal is outside the lines. But uh, when the Americans came here after signing the Treaty of Paris, they found out and dami palang isla na outside the treaty lines, sa Batanes, sa Sulu Archipelago, Scarborough Shoal. So they again talked to the Spaniards. Sabi nila, isama natin ito kasi part of the Philippine Archipelago naman ito, wala, wala doon sa treaty lines. Sabi ng Spaniards, hindi, ayaw na namin pumirma. Mm -hmm. Sabi ng Amerikano, binayaran na kayo namin ng 20 million sa Treaty of Paris. Dadagdagan namin ng 100,000 dollars. Pumayag ang Spain. So, that's why we have the Treaty of Washington of 1900. Okay. That treaty says, lahat ng mga isla, teritoryo, na belonging to Spain at that time, na outside the treaty lines, we also cede to the U.S. So, pasok na. Pasok na. Okay. Kasama na doon ang Scarborough Spratlys. Kasama na. Yung Scarborough, uh, it has several names, no? May panakot, mm. may panatag, may baho de masinlok, uh -huh. uh, may Scarborough. Mm. They're all the same location. Yes, the same shoal. Same shoal, same shoal. Okay. Now, we claim that as our territory. Yes, in the baseline law, of the Philippines, the original baseline law, nakalagay part of our Philippine territory. Nakalagay doon, the following co consists, uh, the following are the territories of the Philippines, ABC. May isang do, na linya doon, uh, Scarborough Shoal, also known as Bajo de Masinloc. Okay. But why did we, when we presented uh, Scarborough to the arbitral tribunal, how come we included it in the regime of islands and not part of our territorial well, claim? Uh, because, uh, we are an archipelago, yeah. pero meron tayong mga isla na outside the archipelago. So, under UNCLOS... Kagaya ng KIG. Oh, KIG. Uh -huh. Under the UNCLOS, you, can, you cannot connect that to the archipelago kasi napakalayo. Uh -huh. But you can claim that as a group of islands, regime of islands. Okay. That's why we call it regime of islands katulad ng KIG, Kalayan right. Island Group. Tawag natin dyan, uh, regime of islands. Because that is the nomenclature under UNCLOS. Now, when we, <coughs> para maintindihan ng audience natin, pag sinabi nating regime of islands, these are islands na, that we occupy. Well, ano ba yun? It's our territory. So, we have, we have sovereign rights. Sovereignty. Kasi Sover sovereignty. 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 Okay. So, <coughs> we are claiming sovereignty over Scarborough Shore. Um even if it was uh, included in the category of regime of islands. Yes. All right. Um, but the arbitral tribunal did not see it that way. How no, come? No, the, because the arbitral tribunal has jurisdiction only on maritime matters. Ah, oh, correct, uh, correct, correct, correct. Uh, it cannot Tama. rule on sovereignty yeah. issues. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah you mentioned that earlier. Uh, That's right. Okay, so you say we have a problem now, no? where China is occupying Scarborough. There was a standoff in 2012. The U.S. brokered a deal for China and uh, the Philippines to simultaneously disengage from Scarborough. Correct. We complied. The Chinese did not. Correct. And nothing happened after that. They stayed there. They stayed there. And uh, what did the U.S. do when China did not comply? Was there anything happening in the back back room? Or? Well, uh, <coughs> from what I gather, they just said, well, they did not withdraw, so we cannot do anything. So, uh, I, you know, uh, let me explain that. The, the mistake of the U.S. was when they said that they will not take sides on uh, in territorial disputes in the South China Sea and they included this is the mistake they included Scarborough Shoal mm -hmm. as the disputed territory I can understand that the KIG uh, uh, they will not take part in disputes over the Spratlys because 
when the Philippines and the U.S. signed the Mutual Defense Treaty, our territory did not include the Sprat list. It was incorporated later on by President uh, Marcos in a PD. Yeah. But Scarborough Shoal was only part of Philippine territory when the Mutual Defense Treaty was signed. So it's not disputed territory already. They, the U.S. said, uh, we cannot defend you in the Sprat list because that's not part of Philippine territory when we signed the treaty. The treaty is not designed for the Philippines to grab territory and force the U.S. to defend the Philippines. It's defense. Only when you are attacked, you can call our help. Why, so, did, why did we invoke uh, the Mutual Defense Treaty when the Chinese stole mischief free from us? Well, because the mischief reef under international law is not territory, it's submerged continental shelf. Mm. But here is the, the, the problem. When the Chinese seized uh, Scarborough Shoal in 2012, we should have insisted that that is Philippine territory. We should have told the Americans that's an invasion of Philippine territory. Yes. We can invoke the treaty because when you were in the Philippines as our colonial, uh, the colonial power, all your maps, official maps, included Scarborough Shoal as part of Philippine territory. They were using it as a gunnery range. They used it as a gunnery range when uh, the bases were still, were still there. But we did not insist, I think. I think that was our mistake. We did not insist. Because now we tayo. Sinabi ng U.S., we will not take sides in territorial disputes in the Spratlys and Scarborough Shoal. Sinama nila Scarborough Shoal. We should have insisted, no, Scarborough Shoal has been Philippine territory since Spanish times, since American times, dapat kasama sa territory natin under the Mutual Defense Treaty. But we were not, you know, uh, I think we forgot about the Treaty of Washington. But, well, that's water under the bridge. But now the U.S. is saying if the Chinese reclaim Scarborough Shoal, that will breach the red line. So, uh, but that's the most. Uh, we don't know what that, you know, the red lines often turn pink or white. <laughs> that which brings, to, brings me to the next question, really. And it's a very sensitive question, considering that we've had a very long alliance with the United States. No? Can we consider them reliable? Well, uh, in my opinion, uh, Let's look at the scenario. Okay, let us say uh, we send a patrol navy ship to the to Reed Bank, and that patrol ship of the Philippines is attacked by a Chinese navy ship, armed attack. Under the mutual defense treaty with the U.S. The Philippines can invoke the treaty if, an, if a public vessel of the Philippines is subjected to armed attack by a third country. Civilian or military? It says public vessel, so it includes Coast Guard and, uh, BFAR. and uh, Navy. How about BFAR? It could be, because that's a public vessel. So if that Navy ship is attacked in Reed Bank in the South China Sea, we invoke the treaty. How will the U.S. respond? Okay. If the U.S. responds and say, that's covered, we will support you, we don't have a problem because the U.S. is there. But if the U.S. does not support us, say, will renege on its treaty obligation, what are the consequences? Okay. The U.S. has defense treaties with, uh, with Japan and South Korea. The, if the U.S. reneges on its defense obligation to the Philippines, the others will worry. The, Japan will, will think twice. We cannot rely anymore on the U.S. nuclear umbrella. We have to develop our own nuclear bombs. South Korea will do the same. We cannot depend on the U.S. anymore. We so have to have our own nuclear bombs. There will be a domino effect. There will be a domino effect, and uh, even Taiwan will really worry. Will have, uh, then they will have to, it's an existentialist threat now to them. So <clears throat> the U.S. doesn't want that. 
So the U.S. will not lightly say we will not support you, we will not defend you if under the mutual defense treaty. They, the consequences will be terrible because if they don't, there will be a domino effect. Everybody will go nuclear now. All the nations, the only way you can defend your country now because you cannot rely on the U.S. nuclear umbrella is to go nuclear yourself. And for China, if that happens, you have South Korea neighbor, very close to China, nuclear power. You have Japan, nuclear power. At the back, you have Russia, nuclear power. Uh, to, the, to, to the south, you have uh, India, nuclear power. It will be surrounded by states that are nuclear armed. So I do not think China would want the U.S. to renege because the effect is everybody goes nuclear. China doesn't want South Korea, Taiwan, uh, Japan to go nuclear. So they will not want to put the U.S. in that position. Because they but, but, but they still want the U.S. to get out. Yes, they still want the U.S. to get out. That's why they will never attack our Navy ship. Because they know the consequences. And I have a proof to that. We have this dilapidated ship in Ayungin Shoal, the oh, RP yes. Sierra Madre. Yeah. It's manned by 12 brave Marines. The, the Chinese could take it any time. And protected by Kalawang, right? Protected by barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't seize it. They just, uh, their Coast Guard vessels, Navy ship, just uh, cruise around it. And they just wait, they're just waiting for the superstructure of the vessel to collapse. <laughs> yeah. Because if they seize it, they attack it, then we will invoke the treaty because that BRP, Sierra Madre, is still listed as a commission ship. And they don't want the Americans to intervene in the South China Sea dispute. The last thing that the Chinese would want is to give legal excuse to the U.S. to intervene to in. in the South China Sea dispute. But will the Americans do it, considering that uh, they need uh, the... They're in bed economically with yeah. China. Will, are they willing the, to sacrifice now, all that? The, the dispute... This is now the, I've uh, analyzed this. What really is the dispute between China and the U.S.? Yeah. Their dispute is very small. Their dispute is freedom of navigation and overflight in the South China Sea. But it's even narrowed down to these this two disputes. In the, the position of the U.S. and U.K., France, Germany, and even Russia, is that in the EEZ of another state, they can sail, they can fly, and they can conduct military activities. They can, they can do mili firing exercises, gather intelligence, all military activities they can do. That is the majority view in UNCLOS. Great and overwhelming number of states adopt that view. So it's international law. China belongs to the whatever, minority. Sorry, whatever happened to Innocent Passage? Uh, the second uh, dispute is Innocent Passage. Mm. Uh, the majority view held by the U.S., France, U.K., Russia. In the territorial sea, you can conduct Innocent Passage without notifying and without give, getting the consent of the coastal state. Okay. China says, yes, you can have Innocent Passage, but you must get our consent okay so those are the two differences they are very small differences okay. uh, otherwise you can sail and fly right. except for those two okay now that this that though that's really the dispute between the u.s so that, that we we're, we're not concerned with that dispute we just want to protect our easy now however you see all the naval powers of the world follow the U.S. view because to be a naval power you must have the you must conduct innocent passage without getting consent you must be able to conduct military exercises in the easy without getting, getting consent China now is becoming a world naval power and in the last five years and I have tracked this down China has acted like the U.S. Russia and U.K in the EEZ of other countries. In uh, uh, 
uh, a few years ago, about uh, five, six years ago, China sent a surveillance ship, military surveillance ship, to the EEZ of Guam and Hawaii without asking permission. So they were doing something that they said can, should not be done in the EEZ. Uh, in um, about three years ago, the Chinese Navy and the Russian Navy conducted so, military... Sorry, so, sorry uh, Justice Tony. They conducted uh, activities within the EEZ of Guam and Hawaii. Yeah, without well, getting consent of the... But were they confronted by the, yeah, the, US? the U.S.? said, we are happy to let you do that because that is our practice. You okay. can do it. Okay. 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 The, now, the Russian Navy and the Chinese Navy conducted naval exercises in the Mediterranean Sea. In the Mediterranean Sea, they are all overlapping EEZs. Yes. There are no high seas. Right. So... If you conduct military activities, you must get the consent of the coastal states. Yeah. They never secured the consent. They just conducted military activities, conducted live fire firing, exercises. live yeah. firing exercises. So that's it. And recently in the Baltic Sea, the Baltic Sea are all EEZs, there are no high seas. They did the same. The Russian Navy and the Chinese Navy jo had joint military exercises, Navy. And they, they conducted live firing without getting the consent. Yeah. And uh, the, the Chinese sent uh, a surveillance ship to a task force, naval task force, to Alaska. The Dutch naval task force passed through the Aleutians, U.S. Aleutians, the territorial sea of the Aleutians, U.S. territorial sea, without getting consent. And and recently, when the U.S. Uh, uh, tested their THAAD missile, uh, they simulated a, a North Korean missile and they intercepted, uh, it, intercepted with it with their THAAD. A Chinese surveillance ship went to the uh, EEZ of Alaska to watch it, to monitor it, without asking permission. And uh, also recently, uh, the other year, the Chinese sent a surveillance ship to Australia, of the coast of Australia, where the U.S. and Australia were conducting a naval exercise of the coast of Queensland. <coughs> and uh, the Chinese naval base vessel, the surveillance ship, was inside the EEZ of Australia, yeah. monitoring. So... That's no longer innocent passage. It's not innocent. So, <coughs> what I am saying is that China is now behaving like a world naval power. And it will one day uh, adopt the U.S. position. Their differences <coughs> will be erased because they need uh, to act that way because they have expensive warships, warplanes, and if they have to get the, sick, the consent of every coastal state, they, they will not be able to move. There are only two <laughs> ways of looking at this. <coughs> the U.S. will give way to China and say, okay, uh, let's live and let live. Mm -hmm. Or they'll have clashing interests, they'll be talking past each other, and they'll end up mm -hmm. shooting each other. The, the, my analysis is uh, in the next five years, China will adopt the U.S. position on, the, on military exercises in the EASA and the passage in the, South, in the uh, territorial sea because of precedents. Uh, in the Cold War, when the Russian Navy, the USSR Navy was still small, the USSR took the position that in the territorial sea, you can exercise innocent passage, but you have to get our consent. But when they had a big navy, they adopted the US position. So what the US did uh, when the USS, USSR said still adopted the position that you need our consent to exercise innocent passage, they would really go through the territorial sea of Russia, of USSR, and the USSR navy would just they bump each other, but eventually the USSR adopted the U.S. position because it became a naval power, and China is exactly there now. So the dispute between China and the U.S. will be settled because it is to their interest. We will be left with our dispute with China over the resources in our EEZ. That's why we have to be careful. We have a different interest. Okay. <laughs> we're going to stop right here. We're going to take a break. And we're going, we will, when we come back, we'll talk about options on how to okay. deal with China. Okay.
Reklamong totoong pinakikinggan. Reklamong talagang pinag-uusapan. Reklamong talagang tinututukan. Pinakikinggan, pinag-uusapan, tinututukan. Sama-sama, sabay-sabay at tuloy-tuloy nating tutukan si Greco sa programa Ereklamo kay Greco. Kasama si Greco, Greco Belhika. Linggo, alas dos ng hapon, sabayang matututukan sa DZRH News Television, DZRH Radio, DZRH News Television, Facebook at YouTube Live Channel at DZRH News News.com Ireklamo kay Greco Feeling mo ba out ka sa mga kwentuhan? Feeling mo ba left out ka sa topic? Baka di mo alam ang trending? Baka di mo pa napanood ang viral? Tuwing Sabado, 6pm Di ka mao-OP sa kwentuhan sa social media Pagsasamahin ko ang mga video na viral Video na trending Kasama niyo ako, Victor De Guzman. Ulit, Sabado, magkita-kita tayo, 6pm, live sa TV, DZRH News Television, at live sa social media, Facebook, at YouTube sa DZRH News Television. TNVS Trending and Viral Show, Sabado, 6pm, sa DZRH News Television. And we're back. You're still with uh, Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan. And uh, with us uh, this afternoon is uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Tony Carpio. Justice Carpio, uh, kanina pinag-usapan natin yung mga uh, potential options ng uh, Pilipinas on how to deal with China. Right now, uh, China can just do whatever it wants in the South China Sea because they have all the resources, eh? the military resources. Uh, in fact, uh, Uh, they're uh, using the playbooks of uh, other superpowers to be able to uh, effectively control uh, their, uh, their position in the South China Sea. But in doing so, they're violating uh, our uh, exclusive rights to our EEZ. Ang problema sa atin, wala tayong kakayahan to enforce the law uh, nor to confront them because we have no military means or for that matter law enforcement means no but does that mean that uh, we are helpless against china are, 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 do we have other options where we can engage them and yeah. assert and assert our rights yeah uh, the one of the reasons why we went to anklos to the anklos tribunal is because we didn't have the military capability to take back scarborough shoal so we decided to go to a forum where we are at arm's length with, the, with China, where the, there is a level playing field, where warships, warplanes, nuclear bombs, and missiles do not count, where the issue will be resolved only in accordance with the law of the sea. And at least, patas ang laban dyan. Now, we should continue that, because that's the winning strategy. Bring China to a forum where there is a level playing field. Because if we confront them in the sea, talo tayo. So, what should we do? Okay. The tribunal said that uh, no island in the Spratlys has an EEZ. Because of that, there are no overlapping EEZs uh, in that area. And we can now sign a sea boundary agreement with Vietnam. Vietnam is willing to sign a sea boundary agreement with us and the premise of that sea boundary agreement is the tribunal said there are no EEZs in the Spratly so we can now sign a sea boundary agreement because there are no overlapping EEZs. So by state practice, we are adopting the ruling. We can also sign a sea boundary agreement with Malaysia. Malaysia is willing uh, because there are no, for the same reason, there are no islands in the Spratly that generate an easy, we can now sign a sea boundary agreement with, with Malaysia. Before, we did not sign a sea boundary agreement with Malaysia because we thought 
that the territory of the Sultanate of Sulu faced the South China Sea. But we already got a definitive ruling from the UP Law Center that the territory of the Sultanate of Sulu faced the Sulu Sea and the Celebes Sea. It never faced the South China Sea. So we will not be prejudiced if we sign a sea boundary agreement with Malaysia facing the South China Sea. So we can do that. And we are adopting the ruling. We are so, enforcing it. So diplomatic arena. Yes, ito. that's the diplomatic arena. Another in the, you see, in Benham Rice, we got it. We, it was awarded to us. L legal naman yon. Illegal yon. No. We can also file an extended continental shelf in Luzon. The only country that can oppose it is China because that's the only opposing country there. But uh, Luzon meaning to say Northern Luzon? Northern Luzon. Okay. We file an extended continental shelf. Parang Benham Rice. Now, from the EEZ of the Philippines in Northern Luzon, we claim and we can file an extended continental shelf and the only oppositor will be China. The only possible oppositor. But what will be the meaning, ground... Meaning Taiwan? Huh? Meaning Taiwan? No, China. China mismo? Oh. But isn't uh, Taiwan in front of us? No, no, that is North Talaga, but facing the South China Sea. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So, but what will be the ground uh, of China for opposing our extended continental shelf claim? They cannot use the nine dash line because that's already struck down by the arbitral tribunal. And the UN Commission on the limits of the continental shelf will have to follow the arbitral tribunal because they are both creations of UNCLOS. The other ground, possible ground of China is the Philippine e, uh, extended continental shelf claim overlaps with our own extended continental shelf claim. But I like that because in that case, China is now arguing on the basis of UNCLOS, no longer an historic right. That, that will be okay because the worst that can happen to us is there will be a split, 50% split. 50-50. 50-50. Hating kapatid. Oh. So, for me, that is the best move because we don't need the consent of any state. We can just file with the UN Commission on the limits of the continent shelf and just wait for China to react. If China does not react, it will be like Ben Ham Rice. It okay. will be awarded to us. Okay. But, but that's as far as negotiating uh -huh. uh, with, with China on how to peacefully address issues. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about asserting our rights, the, right? the, we, uh, so we, we've talked about legal, we've talked mm -hmm. about diplomatic. Uh -huh. What about the field of information? Uh, you know, the, I raise the, this thing because out there, they only hear the side of the mm -hmm. Chinese. They don't hear our side. Mm -hmm. And yet, <coughs> we are the texting capital of the world. Uh, we use uh, Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're also the number one Facebook user mm -hmm. in the world, or prob probably top three. We have not developed strategic communications, mobilizing our our media, our social media, and our networks of Filipinos abroad to deliver the information uh, to their host countries as to what's actually happening, which is part of our defense. No, mm. uh, if we if we're going to talk about elements of national power, we're not using our mm national power to communicate properly and inform the public. That's correct. See, the, the premise there is no Chinese government will ever comply with the ruling unless the Chinese people understand that the nine dash line has no historical and legal basis. So, because if today the Chinese, the Chinese government will comply with the ruling, the Chinese people will oust them. That's right. Because that in their minds, it's their territory because from grade school to college every chinese was taught that they own the south china sea since 2000 years ago under the nine dash line that's why when we sat down with the chinese when they seized mischief reef it was very they were very sincere but we own that since 2000 years ago it's false but that has been Brain, brainwashed that's brainwashed like. how do we change that mindset before we can get the Chinese government to comply, we have to first change that mindset. Okay, the way to change that mindset is one, get a ruling from an international tribunal that's impartial to, from a treaty convention that, uh, to which China has ratified that the nine dash lines has no historical or legal basis. We got that ruling. We are now 
at that stage where we have to convince the Chinese people. So, but to convince the Chinese people, we have to ask the rest of the world. Help us convince the Chinese people because you are a small country. If you can, if China can grab the South China Sea, deprive the other small countries, your big neighbor will also grab your EEZ. So it is to your interest that we stop China from grabbing because... And that's where we lack the strategic communication yes. to get the rest of the world yes. on our side. Yeah. So we have to get the rest of the world because uh, most of the members of UNCLOS are small states. And they, are, they have big neighbors. They have Russia. We have big neighbors that can grab their EEZ. So that's why th 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 this is the way I see it. We have to get their support. And they're willing to, to support us if we lead the way. If you say that we must get their support, is it through the UN General Assembly? One of them. Uh, we can sponsor a, a resolution in the UN General Assembly that uh, because there is this ruling by uh, a UN uh, tribunal, UNCLOS tribunal, China must comply, follow international law. That will be put to a vote. I think we will get a majority. Will the Security Council, where China has veto power, reject it? Well, it will be rejected there because China has a veto power, but we bring it to the UN General Assembly. The UN General Assembly uh, resolution is not binding, but it has very persuasive effect. That's moral. Solution. Yeah, it's moral. It's like the the Palestinians, the they cannot get the the resolution in the Security Council. They bring it to the UN General Assembly, and they get a majority. And Israel and the US is uh, they are really uh, isolated there. So we, we bring it to the UN. We bring it, in fact, in every international convention, in, in every international forum, we sponsor a resolution that the rule of law must be followed. Now, we ask our, the rest of the world to help us convince China because it is to their interest. Now, how do we convince the Chinese people? We have to come out with literature in Chinese, in Mandarin. And the only way to, of course, the Chinese government will block. We cannot send books there. We we'll use the internet. Uh, every year, I estimate about 50 million Chinese travel abroad. They can download it outside of China. Mm. Uh, it, there's a, China is a great firewall, but uh, there are ways to go around that. So, but if 50 million Chinese travel every year, they bring copies inside that can circulate inside. But we have to come out with uh, Mandarin literature, literature in Mandarin. Uh, the book that I uh, published, uh, it's being converted, translated into Mandarin now. And I, I have uploaded it online. Uh, it's downloadable by anyone for free. And the reason for that is that's the only way we can reach the Chinese people, that the whole world is united. That you cannot own the South China Sea. No country can own an entire sea. I think, uh, Justice Tony, what we have to tell ourselves is that if we are to convince the Chinese, we have to be as patient as them, <clears throat> because uh, you know if they can, if if they can, uh, if they're as patient uh, uh, as they have been all these years through thousands of years, we have to be just as patient over the next one thousand years. That's correct. That's why I, I always say this is an intergenerational struggle. Uh, we have laid the groundwork, our generation. We have already the ruling of the tribunal uh, that cannot change anymore. We have to build on that. Uh, the next generation will have to convince the world, convince the Chinese people. It's, it's like the cause of the Palestinians. They suddenly, they have the overwhelming majority of the members of the UN now. We will get that faster. You know, Nicaragua fought the U.S. in the case of Nicaragua versus the U.S. because the U.S. mined the harbors of Nicaragua. Nicaragua sued before the ICJ. It won. And, uh, but the U.S. refused to pay damages. So Nicaragua went to the General Council, U.N. General Council, and sponsored the resolution. First, they went to the U.N. Council. Of course, they were rebuffed there because of the veto power of the U.S. So they went to the U.N. General Council, uh, General Assembly, and sponsored the resolution several times. 
every year their majority would grow bigger and bigger and bigger until at the last resolution only the US and, and Israel voted okay together. Um, so we've, we, we have to look at this at a very long-term perspective and uh, we have already laid up foundation we should guard that we should not waive we should not abandon that ruling because we will build on that that's not part of our ugali because we were we're very short term or yeah, very, very short term uh, our, our outlook is uh, between three to six years yes um, <clears throat> so uh, that brings us to the last portion uh, we know our weaknesses mm. we know the strengths of the other side yeah and there's a very big gap mm. between us and the other side, which is why they're always winning and we're always mm. trying to catch mm. up. Now, just, let's just imagine that uh, this is a virtual conference room and you are with uh, President Duterte, uh, the DFA Secretary, uh, Caetano, uh, the heads of the legislative branches, uh, Speaker Alvarez, uh, Senate President uh, Coco Pimentel, Vice President Lenny Robredo, uh, the former presidents of the Philippines. And you're here discussing two things, just two things. How to protect our national interest in light of all the threats that we're facing in, uh, around the, uh, our EEZ. And in light of our independent foreign policy. At the same time, Part of uh, protecting our national interest is building credible deterrence. Mm -hmm. So how would you weave those concepts into one coherent national agenda? What advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I will lay the premise that what is at stake here is 80% of our EASA in the West Philippine Sea. That area is as big as our land territory. It is. This is the gravest external threat to the Philippines since World War II. We are going to lose oil, fish, gas, and mineral resources. Now, how do we preserve our EEZA in the West Philippine Sea? First, we cannot go to war because the Constitution prohibits war. The Constitution says we renounce war as an instrument of national policy. And also the UN Charter prohibits war. You cannot settle a dispute with other states by going to war. It's against international law. And third, it's stupid to go to war with China because we will lose certainly and lose badly. So we go legal now. And that has been proven. We won in the tribunal. What are the legal steps that we have to take? Not only legal, we will have, as you said, a PR, a communication strategy, all of this. On the legal side, as I said, you file a claim for an extended corner shelf of the coast of Luzon facing the South China Sea. Now, the second, we can send a survey ship to read back because Valampaya will run out of gas in 10 years. We have to develop read back, otherwise, we'll have 10 to 12 hours of daily brownouts in Luzon. We send a ship there to survey it. Only two things can happen. China does not stop it, and well and good. Or China will stop it. If China stops it, we go now to the tribunal. And we will tell the tribunal, the uncle's tribunal, you said in your ruling that we own the gas in Red Bank. So we, we are trying to get it because we are running out of gas now in the Philippines. It will devastate our economy if we cannot get that gas. But the Chinese stop us. We are losing so much every day. We want damages from China. We can do that. Also, <clears throat> the, the tribunal said China costs... But would you, <clears throat> advise, would you advise that while we're undertaking all of these steps, that we still have to prepare for the worst case scenario and therefore we must not stop building credible deterrence? Ah, yes, that's the other... Yeah, so we, I have listed down all of these legal steps. Yeah in all my lectures <clears throat> then we go to the communication side yeah. we've discussed that earlier yeah. that, that's vital and third our credible self-defense there is no free lunch in this world 
and that applies really to countries. Countries that failed to develop a credible self-defense have been erased from the map yeah. or have lost territory. The, the latest example is Ukraine. You know, when the USSR collapsed, Ukraine possessed one-third of the nuclear arms right. of Russia, of USSR. The US, UK, and Russia convinced Ukraine, give up your nuclear arms, we will guarantee your territorial integrity and your <laughs> independence. <laughs> they signed the yeah. Budapest Memorandum. Mm -hmm. The first country uh -huh. that violated that, Russia. Russia just seized Crimea because Ukraine had no more defense. So they were wondering we should not have given up our nuclear weapons because the rule has been the same. If you do not have credible self-defense and, and you have a powerful neighbor, you will lose territory to your powerful neighbor. That's, That's for sure. <laughs> the Vietnamese understand that. They've been losing territory to China. That's why they devote, it's a, they have a smaller GDP than the Philippines, but they're better armed. They, because they know that's the only deterrence. So we must at least put 2% of our GDP to self-defense, to, to, to improve our self-defense because at the end of the day, we will be alone in defending ourselves. It, uh, it's our constitutional duty yeah, it's our to, constitutional de to duty. defend ourselves. Yeah. So we have uh, this legal track, we have a communications uh, strategy, but we should never There's forget. There's also diplomatic. Yeah, we have diplomatic, diplomatic, but we should never forget that if you are defenseless, then you will be overrun. We don't have to develop our military in such a way as to defeat China. We can never do that. But we should be able to inflict a high cost to China if it wants to grab our EZA. We will lose because they have nuclear arms, but it will be very costly for them, so costly that it will deter them. That's the, that's what, that's the strategy of uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Whether, in other words, whether we win or lose in, a, in future battles, we have to uphold our national interests. Yes, we have to uphold. And we have to inculcate in the minds of our people that the number one priority, uh, the condition for our continued sovereignty and independence is national defense. If we don't take care of our national defense, then we should be prepared to lose our independence. On that note, uh, uh, Justice Scarpio, thank you so much for sharing your views. Mm -hmm. And I hope and I'm sure that our audience was enlightened. Marami salamat po. Thank you thank so you. much, Safi. Thank you. Good. Good job.